the U.S. and you know European countries are shipping the trash to Africa, and we're buying it. Fifteen million items of second-hand clothing arrive at Cantamantle Market every week, and guess what? Ghana has a population of thirty million people. You do the maths. I'm Vanessa Canby and in January I went to a beach cleanup organised by the Aura Foundation, Skate Girl Club and Trash Connect to see the work that they are doing with waste and also to see the effect that the second-hand market has on Ghana's oceans. Okay. Hi, my name is Kukwe Shen. I organized this beach cleanup with Liz, the All is Present Foundation, and yeah, with Surf Ghana as well. So I met Liz in 2017. So that's when I found out about the whole continental thing and how the Global North, um, specifically the US and you know European countries are shipping the trash to Africa and we're buying it. Yeah. So the trash that they're actually supposed to spend money getting rid of, taking care of, they ship it to Africa and then we're buying it and it's, you know, they're making money off of the trash basically. So after 2017, I've been, you know, researching, I've been learning a lot and trying to be better and take care of the planet basically. Yeah. I am here um, pulling out exclusive customized trash from the ocean to help people take out some of that plastic and some of those discarded clothes out of the ocean. Um, again, run those tests, wash it, and then put it through the shredder and to see, you know, just starting with like, what can we provide for mattress pads um, instead of foam? Yeah. Yeah. What are you guys doing here today? So today we are doing a few different things. Uh, first and foremost, we're trying to clean a beautiful beach here in Accra, at, uh, just outside Osu Castle. We're actually standing outside of the door of no return. Um, and this beach gets a lot of waste that gets stuck on these rocks here, so that's why it's low tide right now. We're trying to pull a lot of it out. Um, but we're also doing research. So uh, my nonprofit basically looks at sustainability and fashion issues, and one of the things that we look a lot at is the waste that's created by the secondhand clothing trade. Okay. So most of the textile waste that people are pulling out of here, if not all of it, is coming from Contamanto secondhand clothing market. Oh. And that's the excess that they can't sell. So basically 40% of everything that's imported into this country becomes waste. And it ends up in the ocean or it dumped in slums, basically, or going to landfill. So do people just literally throw it into the ocean? There's a few different, we hear a lot of different things. Um, so a lot of this is going to be coming from the Corley Lagoon. Okay. So a lot of the waste from old or from Contamanto is dumped there because it's right next to the market. And so it will eventually make its way out to sea and then back up to the shores here. Um, but also there are many reports of people coming here and actually digging and dumping the trash in the oh sand. Oh my gosh. So is that why people are digging to start? Yeah, for? so we're digging. The community that lives here, they clean they do a great job of cleaning um, every day from seven to eight AM. And they were saying, you know, they don't really focus on textile waste because it's impossible for them to get up, mm. which is why we're focusing on that. Um, but they said that basically they thought we could dig like 12 feet deep and still find it. What do you think the answer to this is? Like, what sort of things <laughs> do you think can be done? Well, um, the purpose of this is multifold, right? So part of this is getting people involved, making sure people here know that we need to be talking about textile waste the same way that we're talking about plastic waste. Uh, textile waste is actually, in many regards, worse for the marine environment because the tiny pieces of microfiber that are released from textiles, especially from like polyester, attract tons of toxins to them and they bioaccumulate and then the fish eat them. And it's also impossible to clean them, basically. So that's one thing that we're doing and we hope that that just generally helps people here to understand that when they clean the beach, they should also be trying to pull the textiles out. Okay. 
Um, but the other aspect is obviously just documenting the amount of stuff. So this stuff is coming from my country, from the United States and from Europe. And so for us, we, you know, want to basically stop the dumping of this waste on the global south. And so to do that, we need documentation. Unfortunately, most of the brands that are overproducing stuff to begin with, fast fashion brands, but also just the fashion industry in general, has an incredible amount of excess. And unfortunately, they don't seem to listen unless you have quite dramatic imagery mm -hmm. and unless you can get enough you know, citizens to voice the same concern. So there's some countries that have banned second-hand clothing market coming in. I think, is Rwanda one of them? I'm not sure. Yes. So do you think that is a step forward in the right direction? Um, so uh, there were five East African countries that uh, attempted to ban the imports of secondhand clothing, but actually there was quite a bit of lobbying, especially in the United States against that, where they threatened to take away a trade agreement, a GOA. So it's quite political. And again, it's proof that this isn't charity, that this is waste management, that That's we are so dumping true. waste. And so that's really important for people from the United States and Europe to understand. And realistically, in our opinion, we don't see it. We don't think it's that pragmatic to push for a ban here in Ghana. We think that there should be limits on the amount that's coming in. So currently, Continento takes 15 million items a week. And oh this goodness, country only so has 30 million people. That's mad. I had yeah. no idea. And that's only one market, right? It's the biggest, but it's still only one. And so, you know, there should be some sort of regulation around how much is coming in and also the quality, right? Yeah. We shouldn't be sending outright trash here. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people in Ghana rely on the secondhand clothing trade. It's cheaper. Um, it allows them access to a lot of different um, styles of clothing that would be harder to find here, but also it's actually the most sustainable thing you can do as a consumer. So if you put it in a global perspective, you know, in the global north, we're talking so much about rewearing and thrifting, and that's the most sustainable thing you can do. But people here in the global south that have been rewearing re our stuff for ages have never been given you know, the proper credit for their contribution to this oh, so-called yeah. like sustainability. You know, what is your company, uh, Swap Accra, what do you do? Swap Accra um, is a, a clothing exchange, um, a sustainable clothing exchange. So um, once a month we pop up and we invite people um, from anywhere to come and bring their old clothing or just clothing they don't want to wear anymore um, and exchange them one for one with someone else's old clothing. That is such a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> and so how did you come up with that idea? Um, actually, a friend of mine in Washington, D.C. started a swap, um, and it's very successful, very big, and I just started going to them and learning from her, and I was very inspired. And when I was coming back to Ghana, I, um, I knew that this was an initiative that I wanted to, um, to start. So, how um, so when, I was, when I was a kid, like when I used to come to the beach, there's like, there was like not a piece of plastic. We didn't yet have rubber bags and plastic bottles. So the only thing you would see in the ocean was like corn, cobs, and maybe coconut leaves from the coconut tree. And it was so clean. And when plastic was introduced to us, we weren't told it was going to be here forever. We took plastic as a substitute for paper and a substitute for leaves, which we used to wrap food in. So we would wrap rice in leaves. And after you eat, when you throw the leaf away, either I go to eat it, or after a few days it dries and turns to dust or whatever. We weren't told that plastic is a totally different thing and it's going to be here forever. So we till today we have the same habits around plastic as we had with leaves. We just think, when we throw the plastic away, somehow it will dissipate in a few days, but it's here forever. I mean, at least our lifetime and a couple generations. So we need to like start telling people from very young that they need to use less plastic or no plastic at all and start reintroducing the old ways that Europe is now coming to teach us that we already had. Um, start going back to that. Like nowadays, when I'm buying anything to drink, if it's coming in plastic, it has to be in glass. Okay. And i rather go thirsty and get something somewhere. Like I'll buy a coconut instead of water. 
So I'm drinking more coconuts now than water because almost all water is in plastic. Otherwise, at home I have a filter and I just drink the tap water filtered and chilled. And I also have a dispenser and they come with these gallons that you refill. But the thing about that is they also throw those away. I mean, I don't, I still use them, but I see like that also ends up somehow. So I'm trying to live more and more, but it doesn't help because, I mean, it's hard because a lot of people don't see the point. Okay, I'm Moses. Uh, I'm the founder of Trash Connect. The Trash Connect is a plastic recycling company. What we do is that we recycle PET bottles into flakes and recycle the HDs into pavement blocks and uh, roofing tiles. Yeah, we have a factory that we used to process and have a processing plant that does all this. I started a company that was 27 February this year, eh, last year. Uh, yes, actually we recycle 15 tons per day. That's the production. So how did, why did you decide to start this company? Uh, I started to start this company because I realized that plastic pollution is causing a lot of mess in Accra. Anytime it rains, it causes a lot of floods. So we want to capitalize on that to provide jobs for the people in the deprived areas who can collect plastics for us in exchange for cash to build economic, economic development. Right? I believe that it's so important to raise awareness on issues that need to be addressed. Share this video to raise awareness and so that it's seen by the right people so that changes can be made to the way that the second-hand clothing market is dealt with in Ghana. Thanks so much for watching this video. Please don't forget to subscribe. I'm Vanessa Canby. See you soon.